Well, Lisa, Cloud Atlas is the epic new movie by the Wachowskis. They co-directed it with Tom Tickwer, who made Run, Lola, Run. And I have no problem saying that this is the first good movie the Wachowskis have made since The Matrix. Now, the Matrix sequels have their moments, but the original Matrix felt bold and visionary and new. That's what was exciting about it. At the same time, it was a movie of ideas that ended with 45 minutes of kung fu, which is to say, I don't take the Wachowskis that seriously. Okay, but tell me about Cloud Atlas. Well, I'm getting to it. I do think they are very nimble and inventive storytellers. In Cloud Atlas, they tell six stories at once, interweaving them over the course of three hours. The stories are set in different periods, the 1800s, the present day, 1973, uh, a Blade Runner future, a post-apocalyptic future. And this movie very much wants to be a mind bender, a head trip, all that kind of stuff. I think its secret is that it's really a gonzo miniseries. It's very accessible. It is not profound. But I do think that it is imaginative. I think it's surprising. And I got caught up in it. We saw, as they say, a different movie. You have to start by saying that this is based on a book by David Mitchell, Cloud which, Atlas. Which I haven't read. Yes, which I have read. Now, I realize we get into the interesting conversation about adaptations and whether it matters whether you've read the book or not or whether a movie needs to hold on its own. Which it, doesn't, I think it, it doesn't matter. It, it, well, it doesn't matter... It shouldn't matter, no, it shouldn't matter. However, if you don't know anything about the book and you see this movie, you think, what is this story that's all over the place? The Wachowskis, I think, are very big on making things that go all over the place, and Tom Tickler also. I felt like this was a movie about splash and display and kind of showing off technique, even showing off having different actors playing six roles, Tom Hanks, Halle Berry, uh, Hugh Grant, they all play that. But if you don't know the book, which you don't have to, but if you don't, then you are missing the heart of what Cloud Atlas is about. Well, I don't know what's in the book, but actually I thought the movie was about something very specific and valid, which is uh, it kind of picks up the theme of The Matrix. It is about rebels in each of the stories. There's someone who is rebelling against the power, against authoritarian control. What's innovative about the movie is that the stories bounce off each other. Uh, the idea of one rebel from the 1800s or from the early 20th century um, echoes into the present. We are all connected in terms of the way that ideas spread over time and through societies, which is not, once again, a profound idea, but it is very interesting in terms of the way it's embodied right in the movie's form. I think, first of all, that it's not necessarily about rebels. I think we're reading different stories into what this is about. I think that I have to go back to the book, I'm sorry, but the way the book is constructed is a nesting story so that each thing goes out of the other. You cannot do that visually. I realize that when you're adapting something on the page that you can think of in your head, you have to shuffle it differently. So this moves back and forth between time rather than unfolding around time. This changes the value and the meaning of the story. It just does. It makes it a different kind of exercise. It makes it a Wachowski exercise, well, and it makes it a tick for exercise, but it looks like an exercise exercise in makeup, in prosthetics, in mixing gender and race so that the actors are playing men are playing women and their whites are playing blacks, but it feels like an experiment rather than something successful. My short response to that is that I think you're too beholden to the book, to be honest. But beyond that, what I'd say is that I think the Wachowskis have found their own equivalent to what the book was doing. I mean, I'm just guessing about what the book was doing, in that if you look at the makeup, with actors like Tom Hanks, Halle Berry, and most surprisingly and sort of delightfully, Hugh Grant yes, playing lovely. all these different roles at once, including some very villainous ones. It's kind of a stunt. It's kind of a game. Very and you kind of enjoy spotting these people beneath the makeup. But it's also about something in that they're doing a kind of burlesque of identity. What they are saying is they're using the actor's art to say that all our identities are a little more liquid than we think of them as, especially in this era. And that connects up with the theme that the identities of these rebels are sort of passed through time. And I think that there, I think there's something true about that when you think of the way that uh, we think back over the centuries to heroes and til still take inspiration from them. We don't just live in the present day. That's not necessarily yes, a science fiction idea, but the Wachowskis turn it 
into compelling science fiction. And maybe we just have a basic difference in how we're reading it and how we're perceiving it. Because we're looking, this is interesting, because we're looking at the same movie, we're seeing it unfold, you felt more coming out of it than I did. I did. And this is maybe what it comes down to, and maybe we and our identities can shift and change as we watch movies together, and how we all take in the same thing is a matter of different experience. Absolutely. The last thing I will say about this movie is that I don't think the ideas in it are deep but what no, caught me but what surface. but what caught me up is how deeply the Wachowskis and Tom Tickwer believe in what they're doing. I got caught up in the passion of that and in the end I found it kind of moving because it's not a visionary mind bender but it's a Hollywood movie that really works.